Brandon Webb was once considered one of the best pitchers in baseball. He was widely regarded as one of the best sinker ballers in all of baseball, along with Roy Halladay and Ching Ming Wang. This sinker led to Webb being known as one of the best ground ball pitchers in baseball. But unfortunately for Webb, his career didn't last very long. He was limited to only six seasons in the big leagues as his career was ruptured by various shoulder injuries. But before we get to the end, let's rewind to the beginning. Back in 2003, just three seasons after being drafted in the eighth round by the Diamondbacks, Webb was making his big league debut against the Expos. And for Webb, he had a very productive rookie season. He pitched in 180 innings where he went 10-9 with a 2.84 ERA and punched out 172 batters. Webb finished third in the National League Rookie of the Year voting only behind Dontrell Willis and Scott Pesednik. So heading into 2004, things were looking up for Brandon Webb. He was heading into his age 25 season where he was slotted into the number two spot in Arizona's rotation only behind Randy Johnson. Kurt Schilling departed which left the door open for Brandon Webb to prove himself. And in 2004, it was a weird season for Brandon Webb. He pitched relatively well, but led the league in some categories that you don't want to lead the league in. He led the league in starts, losses, and walks. But he did pitch to a 3.59 ERA and had 164 strikeouts. So while it may have been a step down from his 2003 rookie season, it was still a good season nonetheless. Getting over to 2005, Webb had yet another pretty solid year. He pitched in 229 innings where he went 14-12 and 12 with a 3.54 ERA and 172 strikeouts. And after the season, the Diamondbacks rewarded Webb with a four-year $19.5 million extension. So heading into 2006, in his age 27 season, expectations were at an all-time high. And Webb proved he was worth the money. He pitched in 235 innings where he went 16-8 and 8 with a 3.1 ERA and 178 strikeouts. And he also had a 152 ERA plus which led all of baseball and ended up winning his first Cy Young. It was a great season for Webb who at this time had been known as one of the best pitchers in the game. Now getting over to 2007, Webb was again very productive. He pitched in 236 innings where he went 18-10 and 10 with a 3.01 ERA and 194 punchouts. Again, Webb led the league with a 158 ERA plus and finished second in the Cy Young voting. And in this 2007 season, Webb was as dominant as he had ever been. He posted a franchise record 42 scoreless innings in which he had three straight shutouts. And in this season, the Diamondbacks won the NL West, leading up to a NLCS matchup against the Cubs. And Webb got the nod in Game 1 where he pitched seven innings of one-run ball, striking out nine. The Diamondbacks ended up sweeping the Cubs in the NLDS, but unfortunately got swept by the Rockies in the NLCS. And while it was an unfortunate ending to the Diamondback season, Brandon Webb had proved that he could pitch in the big moments. Now moving over to 2008, Brandon Webb looked every bit of the Brandon Webb he had looked like in the past couple seasons. He began the season with 9 straight wins and looked virtually unhittable. He finished the season with 22 wins, had a 3.3 ERA, 183 punchouts, and finished second in the NL Cy Young voting behind only Tim Lincecum. So up to this point, it was clear that Brandon Webb was one of the best pitchers in Diamondback history. He had finished no worse than second in the Cy Young voting in each of the past three seasons. So heading into 2009, Brandon Webb was looking to do more of the same. But unfortunately for Webb, his season only lasted four innings. After this first start against Colorado, Webb was placed on the disabled list with a right shoulder injury. And a couple months later, in August of that season, he ended up having surgery which ended his season. Webb ended up spending the year rehabbing from this injury, but also ended up missing the 2010 season. Now heading into the 2011 season, Webb was a free agent and he ended up signing with the Texas Rangers. Through the first half of the season, Webb pitched in the minor leagues as he was rehabbing from this shoulder surgery. But on July 24th, the Rangers announced that Brandon Webb would undergo a second rotator cuff surgery on his right shoulder in August of that year. This surgery ended Webb's 2011 season, and he would not be ready to pitch again until the start of 2012. But unfortunately for Webb, the injuries continued to pile up as he ended up retiring in 2013. And later on in 2013, Webb ended up filing a workers' compensation claim against the Rangers for mistreating his injuries. So after just six seasons, Brandon Webb called it a career. And for Webb, this is just a very unfortunate ending to such a storybook career. 
During his prime, he was arguably the best pitcher in the game of baseball. But Webb is unfortunately the perfect example of what injuries can do to such a good career. And although he did only play in six seasons, Webb is regarded as one of the best pitchers in Diamondback history, only behind players like Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. So while we never got to see a full career out of Brandon Webb, it was still something else to watch this guy pitch when he was in his prime. But anyways, that's going to wrap today's video up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.